Hey everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at Chicken Analytics. This is the halftime show on Stock Charts TV. And each and every week we kind of go over what's going on in the markets, just a quick overview and things of that nature. And we've the quarter ended on on Friday and uh off to an amazing start. We'll just look at some performance numbers, um, looking at the Qs and the S P and then the specific sectors. Obviously, we all know the tech has done well and uh the defensive side of things has kind of tailed off, but uh, really not a terrible quarter, um, but relatively to the other names uh, and sectors that have done well, um, it was really no contest. So um, we've got uh, really the top areas obviously being tech heavy, uh, tech heavy. NASDAQ did well. Uh, obviously, the S&P did OK, but not as great, um, not as good as a performance. And that kind of goes to show you that when you start to see momentum uh, take over, Right, that the the momentum is really just what's going to push everything. Now we've gone through an incre incredible quarter. You're talking about uh, a bank, slight banking crisis, um, really a crisis of uh, of risk management issues. Um, but there have been a bit of a run, run on the banks. There have been on the smaller banks, obviously, and the larger banks have just taken in so much, uh, many more deposits that don't forget that's their liability side of the banking uh, ledger. Uh, deposits are not assets, they are liabilities, but they help produce uh, performing assets once you have that cash on hand. And so um, we're still tiptoeing here. And of course, over the weekend, what happened, we started to see that OPEC uh, decided to, I guess, put a floor in uh, the price of oil. And depending on which one you look at, we were talking about this last week about uh, the oil price being in that range where the White House said they would start buying, which is around $70 per barrel. Um, and sort of the OP OPEC countries just made a decision that um, they're going to cut production by about 1.1 million uh, barrels per day. And, you know, there's some headlines out there saying it's going to make the Fed's job a little bit more complicated. But what do we have there? We've got energy uh, rallying after being down that you know specific sector, which we called out that was sort of underperforming. It was down about 4.3%. Uh, not the worst performing sector, but not far off the bottom with healthcare about 4.33 and financials uh, being really the worst performing sector, rightfully so, down over 5.5% for the quarter. So um, it's really just, I don't want to call it a mean reversion trade, but you're seeing energy perk up and a lot of names just pop today uh, based off of this particular news. So we'll see how things go. I mean, as they progress, we'll look at that. So we're talking about momentum. We're going to look at our uh, one of our check-in lists that actually spots momentum indicators. And uh, we have a, a specific signal that kind of calls out which names um, and ETFs are performing. And we'll look at that today. But we'll go over our sectors uh, today uh, from a ratio standpoint. We'll look at oil and then uh, we'll take it from there. So let's see what the charts are telling us today. All right, picking up um, what we were talking about here uh, from the beginning of the video, which was really the performance for um, December 30th through March 31st. And obviously see financials being the worst here at down five and a half. And uh, the Qs, the tech heavy uh, NASDAQ 100 index ETF, uh, doing pretty well at 20.7. The sectors of uh, communication services and technology, which are we know they're tech heavy, did the best, uh, over 21%, both uh, for those particular sectors, and discretionary up 16%. And there's your S&P up 7.5%. And, and so we talk about this all the time. We talk about, you know, particularly uh, looking at the, the cap-weighted indexes or, you know, the, uh, the equal-weighted indexes, you know, or ETFs, I should say. And there's going to be a difference in performance there. Obviously, volatility is going to be a little less when you're equal-weighted. But there's your industrials and materials. Um, just putting in a fair return and energy being, uh, get, again, down 4.3 with financials, as I said, being the worst. And we can understand why, but here's your group of defensives, right? Utilities, healthcare, and staples, just really sideways to down and uh, rightfully so. When the momentum kicks in, that's kind of what's what we're starting to see. Okay, let's jump over to uh, the oil chart here. I'm going to put my uh, highlighter on so you can see where my cursor is. You know, I named this the White House buy zone because it's kind of right in the middle, uh, you know, above or below 70. You know, we thought we'd give them a little leeway. Maybe they'd start buying around 66, but definitely in around that 70 level. Now, I don't know for sure if the SPR has been replenished. There's a lot of headlines talking about it today, 
but it seems like we were selling um, some barrels in February and uh, not at uh, the worst prices uh, that we could have sold them at, but we missed the opportunity to buy them back, it seems. So I don't know for sure. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. And there's a lot of speculation about what's going on there uh, right now. And so if we start to look at some of the sectors. Uh, we talked about obviously tech doing well and all that, but let's just look at materials, energy, and industrials right now. Uh, and again, materials weren't great um, from the ratio standpoint. They weren't terrible, uh, but they really weren't a place to be to, to make money. Uh, they did okay, but not not great. Looking at industrials, the same thing. Uh, pretty much the same chart, but that ratio chart looks pretty strong here. It doesn't really seem to be signaling anything other than um, a choppy sideways market. And if we look at energy, up almost four over four percent today uh really held out uh it did not turn negative we talked about this not being uh a change in trend completely just tailing off on the ratio aspect and on the actual fund itself so when you start to see those setups you know you want to you want to be careful you don't want to overreact to the downside but we really didn't have a sell signal quote unquote uh, that pushed us out of the trade. And so, you know, you, you would have stayed weighted toward energy, but it was really kind of underperforming and putting in lower lows on the ratio and things of that nature. So it just goes to show you that this is headline driven and news driven. And sometimes you got to really be patient and wait for this specific signals, right? Trust, but verify kind of a thing. You trust your trend a little bit, but you got to verify the signal just, just to be sure. And on the reverse, we, we, we know what happened with XLK. It's just been a powerhouse, and that signal was really putting in right around the February area, but on the ratio was a little behind um, beginning of March, but still, if you waited, um, didn't hurt, right? Didn't hurt you, hurt you less. And looking at like a utilities from just one, looking at one of the defensives, again, that downside was put in on the ratio in the beginning of the year at the end of January or so, but really on this particular ETF chart, um, you know, it was signaling, underperformance since October. And so that's kind of how those played out. But let's take a look at some of the momentum names here on the Chaken list. And I'll just pop over to our system. I got them queued up here. And I've got 73, what we call momentum breakouts uh, that are bullish, only one that was neutral. I'll go all the way down. I'm just curious, what was the neutral name? It was Monster, M-N-S-T, Monster Beverage. And really, from from a neutral standpoint, it's not really that bad of a, of a performer. It's been doing really well since um, last year, like April is when the relative strength change really didn't get negative here, but just a slight area, but just a, a pretty steady uh, performer there for the entire year. But, you know, I'm going to try to go through some of these. I'm not going to get through 73 names here or 73 tickers, that's for sure. But if you can see what uh, categories they're in, Looking at ANSS, a software name um, with a nice breakout here from that relative strength in the beginning of January. Again, that's when the momentum train really started um, to take off and leave the station. And there's a name that moved from 240 up to, you know, 330, almost 90 points. Um, a pretty interesting name. Here's an, uh, these are mostly these are ETFs, which is interesting, right? So here's a global robotics ETF that still does, doesn't look like it's out of the buy range. You know, for me, I'd like to see it test that 23, which it did, and now it's starting to break out. And so that's kind of interesting. If I look at CARZ, uh, again, this is the First Trust, First Trust Network Future Vehicles and Technology ETF. So you're thinking like think EVs and things of that nature. Not bad. Um, it's doing okay. Again, a momentum breakout being signaled. But here's a name, an old name, uh, but certainly not forgotten, Cisco. Cisco Systems, right? The tech and networking communications equipment company has been on a on a nice little move here, right? And still, so a lot of these names are starting to get, you know, sort of a, uh, the the giants are being awoken a little bit. And um, look at Interpublic Group, IPG, a media name on a breakout. So you've got really an interesting, uh, diverse group of names and a lot of old tech and mega cap tech, right? You start to look at a name like Oracle, started to break out in the end of uh, October. And that was really still neutral. And we turned bullish uh, somewhere around, we'll call it the week of March 13th, it looks like. And the momentum breakouts is signaling today. And you're starting to see these names 
strong stocks and strong industries continue to perform. And I'll just pop through a couple more names here. Let's just look at the cues. We talked about it, what an incredible performance it had for the first quarter. Really, the relative strength started to change somewhere around the beginning of February. But off the bottom, when you started to see that increasing area, uh, it moved pretty steadily into that zone of, I would call, resistance right around this level of about 330 or so. If it gets above there and tests that 330 to 333 level, you know, we can see maybe potentially higher highs here um, going on. Here's a name that I noticed that came up on a bunch of my screens. This is Levi Strauss, right? The apparel maker. We know the name uh, from the jeans and all of the other clothes that they make. But the textiles group has done pretty well. And this name really started to perform again. Talking about the beginning of January, we started to see a mean reversion back to growth and out of value. Um, but you start to look at some of the other names in here, like you can look at the Schwab uh, lar U.S. large cap ETF here. That's a growth ETF. Let's just pop open the power gauge here and see what we see. Small dividend yield, about a little bit better uh, beta than the market. Very low expenses, a lot of money in there, and it trades pretty heavily. But you can see what names are in here, right? If you had our system or if you go to their fact sheet, you can take a look. But I'm going to load the Schwab ETF names in here, and you're not going to be surprised, right? There's ANSS, which is the name that was at the top of our momentum breakout list. It's actually one of the holdings in this name. We've got names like Adobe, AMD, right? All these old tech names in here. Even Dell Computer is in this name, which doesn't look bad, but it's not. it's been struggling here from a relative strength standpoint. But we just went bullish on the name. Um, actually very bullish on the name. You could see what it looks like. Again, it's a $28 billion market cap, revenue of 102 bill, projected PE of about seven and a half, a yield of 3.68 and a beta under the market. So look, I can see a lot of opportunity here in some of these names. And uh, that's how you kind of find, you spot, see what's going on on, on, the, on, the, on the indexes itself, see where the money is flowing. And then obviously, find some ETFs that maybe represent that specific group and then look inside. That's how you find some other alpha and start to build, you know, building your list of names. So you can watch the ETF itself, or you can look at, at some of the names underneath the hood. Here's a name, the home builders, which have really, I think baffled a lot of folks as rates start to rise, as inflation still kind of stays persistent. And uh, it's, it's amazing to see the household durable companies and home builders in general do well. If I click on that specific group, let's see what, let's drill down a little bit further and look at it, some different names in there. You're going to see a lot of home builders, obviously, uh, in the very beginning. And then you're going to see there's Lennar, there's KB Homes, right? All these charts look very, very similar, right? They all started to break out the, at the uh, end of the year, um, beginning of this year, 2003. And Another, obviously, MHO, another household durables name, another home builder. But you got names like, let's see here. I was looking at this earlier. Oh, Mohawk. That's the one I was looking at, right? So it kind of goes hand in hand with some of the home builders. But this one's struggling, right? It broke out, came back down. It is a strong stock and a strong group. But relative strength is really holding this back with negative money flow. So you get some mixed setups here, mixed indicators. So you have to trust the trend, as I said earlier but you got to verify what's going on underneath the hood and a lot of these names. All right, folks, that's all we have for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Again, trust but verify the trends. Take a look at what's going on in the big picture, but look underneath the hood and see what's happening in those you know, specific names in the ETFs that are breaking out. Take care. We'll see you next week.